This question has to do with what happens to children at the rapture and during the tribulation. When it comes to the rapture of the church, which I believe happens before the tribulation, I believe all children who haven't reached the age of accountability will leave in the rapture. All babies would definitely leave in the rapture. They are safe when it comes to their soul. And here are a few quick verses about why I believe this is so. In 2 Samuel 12:22 through 23, we just we've just seen where David committed adultery with Bathsheba. He had his he had her a husband killed in the front lines of the battle and as judgment on him for this his child dies and it says and he said while the child was yet alive i fasted and wept for i said who can tell whether god will be gracious to me that the child may live but now he is dead wherefore should i fast can i bring him back again i shall go to him but he shall not return to me so this is David speaking about his child that died. The baby isn't coming back, but David is going to him. Obviously, David was going to paradise to see the child again. And this proves that a child is safe when it comes to his soul. And then in Luke 18, Jesus said in Luke 18, 16, and 17, But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me. And for, forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So Jesus Christ is saying that the child is part of the kingdom of God. This proves that they are safe. Now Paul is going to show you the process of how you go from being safe as a child into being under the wrath of God. Once you reach the age of accountability. Look at Romans 7 and verse 9. It says, For I was alive without the law once. I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Paul was alive without the law. When he was a young child, he had no idea he was sinning against God. However, when the commandment came, sin revived and he died. Once he realized that his wrongdoings were sins against God, he reached the age of accountability. In Romans seven ten through 12, he says, And the commandment, which was ordained to life, and found to be unto death for sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. So before you reach the understanding that you need salvation because you have sinned against God, before you reach that understanding, you're safe. And this isn't a certain age. It happens differently at different ages for different people. God knows your heart. For this reason, all children who have not reached the age of accountability, I personally believe, would leave at the rapture. Because they're safe. You know, I believe. And since they're living during the church age, God's just going to take them on in the rapture. That's my personal belief on that and then in psalm 51 3 through 4 david shows you how you will see sin if you if you've reached the age of accountability he says for i acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest he said to god against thee and thee only have i sinned when a person realizes they've sinned they've sinned against god and that they need to be saved because of those sins, they've reached the age where they need to be saved. At the rapture, all born-again Christians will leave out of this world. The loss will be left behind. Now, after the rapture, as you know, the tribulation takes place. I believe in a seven-year tribulation period, a lot of great men would make it more or less, and that's fine, but we would all agree that people will still be going on with their life and having children. There will be babies born after the rapture, Matthew 24 is the definitive chapter on the tribulation. And Jesus Christ is laying out for the disciples an outline of the tribulation. And he says something very significant in there, Matthew 24, 19. 
He says, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. This proves that women will be with child during this time. And going by this verse, it would be a hard time for the mother and the child. The tribulation is going to be a very hard time. Think about how hard it would be for a woman to have a child and to get it what it needs during the Antichrist system of buying and selling only with the mark of the beast. Think about how hard it would be if this is a, a woman that's a saint and she's trying to take care of her child without getting the mark. Think about how hard it would be for a woman with child to be on the run from this system. As we talked about last week, if there is a scenario where a person or child is forced to get the mark, the child who hasn't reached the age of accountability is safe. He will not face the wrath of God for it. People have got it in their minds that men go to hell who have the mark without exception. However, it says they who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark has no rest in or not. Those are the ones who go to hell. A child who doesn't even understand sin obviously doesn't have the sense to worship the beast, obviously doesn't have the sense to receive the mark willingly, and a conscience, conscious decision goes along with the damnation. It's not just taking the mark. So the scenarios where even a person is held down and given the mark would go under the same category. That is a scenario that might not even take place. But I believe there's a conscious decision that takes place when a person takes the mark. And that would have more to do with the damnation than the mark itself because they're receiving it. They're worshiping the beast and they're receiving the mark. It seems you'll either willingly receive the mark, get beheaded, or stay in hiding. One of those three options. It's not going to be just a normal life where you have freedom and things like that to do what you want to do. You'll willingly receive, receive the mark, go by the beast system, you'll, you'll get beheaded for rejecting it, or you'll just stay in hiding somehow, which would probably be hard to do. And since the tribulation is most likely going to be around seven years, most likely the majority of kids born during that time wouldn't ever reach the age of accountability anyway. With this being said, there are also other beliefs that a child might be left behind at the rapture to face the tribulation if both of his parents are lost. However, if one of them is saved, they will get to go in, to the, in the rapture. And they use the verse in 1 Corinthians 7.14 to prove this, which says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So they will say, you know, if there's at least one parent saved, then the child would go in the rapture. But if both are lost, then the child would be left behind as well. And I don't hold to that belief personally. But when it comes to these teachings, I'm not going to be too dogmatic about it. When it comes to these topics, it is one of those situations where I trust the Lord to see the hearts of the people. He can see their hearts, and He can see the children and their hearts, and I trust and believe He's going to do right. And the verse that comes to mind is in Genesis. Genesis 18.25, when Abraham's talking to the Lord, he said, That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Many times, questions arise in our mind about what's going to happen to our children if the Lord came back in the rapture today. We just have to trust and believe, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Whatever happens, whether the kids go in the rapture or they don't go in the rapture, God's going to do what's holy and just. And we can count on that for certain. Now, Another question I got, can people with, can people today with 666 tattoos be saved? If a person goes and gets a tattoo that says 666 or something like that, can they be saved? The quick answer is yes. The simple answer is that there is, there's not a sin that you can commit today that would make it where you didn't have the opportunity to be saved anymore. And the simple answer is that there is no mark of the beast until the beast shows up. You can't have the mark of the beast and the beast not be here. 
Notice that the mark doesn't show up in the book of Revelation until after the beast has made his presence known in Revelation 13, 11 through 18. Also, you have to remember that the mark of the beast shows up in a completely different period of time than what you are in now. And any preacher will tell you that if you take the mark of the beast, then you're damned for eternity. However, not all of them will admit this is a work. In the tribulation, a man must abstain from, wi from willingly receiving the mark or he's doomed. And this is unlike anything today. There is nothing you can do today that would automatically damn you. But there is in the tribulation. And a good majority of preachers say salvation in the tribulation is just like it is today. That makes zero sense. Think about it. God raptures all the Christians out before the tribulation begins. Christians make up the body of Christ. If people are put into the body of Christ after the rapture, then what was the point of him taking his body out of the world to begin with? If he's just going to have more people be put in the body to have his body go through the tribulation. And if a tribulation saint isn't a member of Christ's body, then salvation is not the same. Because as a New Testament born-again believer, you are put into the body of Christ. That's part of your salvation. That's your salvation. Also remember that the Holy Spirit operates much differently in the tribulation. And most people, the majority of people, realize that because they believe in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit leaves during the tribulation. So, they deep down they know that. Not only does He not baptize you into the body of Christ, but He doesn't seal you into the day of redemption. Those are things that happen to us today. And those things are what makes it impossible for us to commit some type of unpardonable sin. The fact that you're sealed into the day of redemption, the fact that you're baptized into the body of Christ, those things make it impossible for you to lose your salvation. And the fact that neither one of those things happen during the tribulation make it a very different time period than we're living in now. A person could have 666 tattooed all over their entire body today and believe the gospel and go to heaven just like any Christian who doesn't even have any tattoos. Because salvation is not of works. Ephesians 2, 8, Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 9 says it perfectly. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If a person is damned for getting a tattoo, then salvation is faith and works. You'd have to believe the gospel and abstain from something. But it's believe the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord and what He did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin. And that's what it takes to be saved, not abstaining from a certain sin. The person asked a question also regarding works that you do after salvation. He's worried that his works after salvation have something to do with keeping the salvation. The good things and the bad things you did before salvation are a different issue than your salvation. It has nothing to do with it. The good and bad things you do after salvation are a different issue. They have nothing to do with your salvation. In the book of Galatians, Paul is trying to show them that doing good works are not what keeps you saved. He says in Galatians 3, in verse 3, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? He's asking this question. And he's saying, having begun in the Spirit, meaning they're saved, are they now made perfect by the flesh? Meaning, do you keep yourself saved by living a good life in the flesh? No way. You can't live good enough to get saved. You can't live good enough to stay saved. There isn't a sin you can commit that will damn you other than dying without believing on Jesus Christ. In the tribulation, it's a different story. There is a sin that can damn you. If you worship the beast and receive the mark, and you're damned. But there isn't a sin like that that you can commit today. That's, there's nothing that you can do that's going to make you lose your salvation. There's nothing that you can do to make yourself keep your salvation. It's God that's keeping it for you. It's God that saved you. It's God that's keeping you. 
Think about it like this. If you couldn't do nothing to deserve salvation, what makes you think you can do something to deserve salvation after you have it? But this has just been a couple quick question and answers.